Hi everyone, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing one of my most favorite videos to do and that is my most anticipated releases for late 2019. I did one in the beginning of 2019 but I recently realized that a lot of the titles that I am anticipating this fall really haven't been announced until a few months ago so I didn't know about them in the beginning of 2019 and so I figured now would be a good time to do another video and let me tell you I think that fall is the most stacked time for book releases it just seems like there are so many books that come out in September, October, and November it is a jam-packed three months and I have so so many books to talk about today so many but I'm so excited because I just love the thought of a new book and then like pre-ordering it maybe getting a pre-order gift and anticipating this book and being able to read it like it's just some of my favorite things so without further ado let's just hop right into it and let's start with the books of august however i'm gonna cheat a little bit and do a book that comes out on july 31st because i just love it so much and that is the merciful crow by margaret owen i got an arc of this at book con and i read it in july and was completely obsessed with it and so I have a copy here. I went out and got a finished copy as soon as I could and I just needed to include this in this video because I didn't even know about it until BookCon and I don't know how I didn't know about it because it is, is such a cool book. So let's get into what it's about. The crows are the lowest caste in society with no inherent magic. They must depend on their skills as mercy killers and teeth magic to survive. But when the crown prince Jasmir part of the phoenix cast aka the royal cast fixes death to escape an evil queen he barters protection from the crows and offers them a better place in life when his mission is complete and thus he encounters fi who is a crow chieftain in training along for the ride is jasmere's body double tavin who may just want more for his life than just being a shadow of the prince oh my god this book is so good i love it if you don't know, me and Maddie hyped this book up so much because we read it around the same time and both just really, really loved it. And that's my heart. I love it a lot. So please check it out. It is out now because it came out on July 31st. And you won't regret reading it because it's amazing. And I mean, just look at this cover. Like, I'm freaking in love with it. Next up is Rage, which is a sequel to Roar by Cora Carmack, which I was able to meet her at BookCon. And this is a book that wasn't really on my radar before then, and I have yet to, to read it, but I do have an interest in reading it eventually. Obviously, I, I own it. So the sequel is out on August 27th. Aurora comes from one of the oldest Stormling families with the power of storm magic. However, she is the princess of the land and born with storm magic of her own. When she is arranged to be married with a stormling prince from a neighboring country, she discovers some dark secrets about him and really does not want to marry him. And thus, she's on the hunt for a way out. She stumbles across a black market where they are selling storm magic, which was acquired by storm hunters. And so Aurora sets out to get some magic for herself. I mean, storm magic sounds pretty cool and this cover is gorgeous. So if I like this book, then I will pick up the sequel and it's out soon. So on August 6th, we have two books coming out. The first one being House of Salt and Sorrows by Erin A. Craig. And at the moment that I'm filming this, it is not yet August 6th, but I have an advanced copy because this was my book of the month pick for August. So if you are interested in getting book of the month YA, please consider using my link. It is down in the description and below and you can use the code FLEX, FLEX to get your first box for $9.99. And I'm so happy that I was able to partner with book of the month YA because I just love reading YA books. So it's perfect and this book, just sounds really really cool. It is a retelling of the 12 dancing princesses which is actually a fairy tale that I've never read before so I'm excited to see how a retelling works when I don't know the original source material. Annalie lives a sheltered life in a manner by the sea however her many sisters keep dying one by one and so Annalie begins to suspect that these deaths are no accident and when Annalie becomes involved with a mysterious stranger it is a race to the death to find out what is actually happening to her family. The next book on August 6th is The Dragon Republic, which is a sequel to The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. Rin is a war orphan who surprised everyone when she aces the empire-wide test, and so she is shipped off to the country's military academy. There she discovers her shamanistic abilities to communicate with the god. And I believe this is a villain origin story, so that just makes me very intrigued for this one. And 
for the sequel. And last up for August, we have Crown of Coral and Pearl by Mara Rutherford, which is coming out on August 27th. For generations, the princes of Alara have married the most beautiful woman from the ocean village of Verenia. Nor is left with a scar on her face from a childhood accident, and so it is clear that her identical sister, Zadie, will be chosen to be the princess. But when Zadie is gravely injured, Nor must take her place. And discovers impossible truths about a plot to destroy the home that she was so eager to leave. I've heard good things about this one, and I just got an arc on NetGalley, so hopefully I will read it before it comes out on August 27th, and, and honestly, probably one of my most anticipated books of the year is coming out in September, so let's talk about some September releases. We have, of course, Dark Dawn, which is the third book in the Nevernight Chronicles. So we have Nevernight, God's Grave, and the God's Grave UK edition. And hopefully J. Kristoff is announcing reprint news, because if he doesn't, I will just shrivel up and die because I need to complete my collection. And I may or may not have already bought like three copies of Dark Dawn, but no regrets for the series that you love. Honestly, that is part of being a book collector. So Dark Dawn is the conclusion and J. Kristoff has kind of talked about how, and he's set this up in the prologue for Never Not Night, so this is not a spoiler, but how the book is a trilogy because it follows birth, life, and death of Mia Corvair. So um, I'm going to be very emotional reading this last book and I'm just so excited. It's out September 3rd and I'm... Mia Corvair is the daughter of an executed traitor in a land where the three sons almost never set. She becomes an apprentice in the Red Church, known for its most deadly assassins in order to learn how to take revenge on what was taken from her. And... I, I love the series. Like, Jay Kristoff is amazing. The writing style is super different, but like, I think it works so well. And he just has this snarky little humor, and it's an amazing series. I can't recommend it enough. I love it. September 3rd is honestly a stacked day for book releases, and so I have a lot to talk about that are coming out all on the same day. So, next up on that day, we have Five Dark Fates by Kendra Blake, which is the last book in the Three Dark Crown series. So we have Three Dark Crowns, One Dark Throne, and Two Dark Reigns. And this series is just honestly a fun time. I have liked each subsequent book better and better, so I'm just assuming that the last book is really going to do it for me. And it was actually supposed to end after book two, and then Kendra Blake got a book deal for two more of the books, which is why we get to go the places that we did. And I think book three really had a lot of elements added to it that I really enjoyed. And I'm excited to see the fate of all of these sisters. And I've talked about One Dark Throne and Two Dark Reigns, I think in my like October and January wrap ups, if you are interested in my thoughts on those. But basically the Three Dark Crowns is set in the island of Fenburn where three triplet princesses are born and when they turn 16 they must fight to the death for the throne and each princess is born with a different type of power and so we follow Mirabella, Arsinoe, and Catherine as they set out on their journey of their 16th year and have to kill each other for the throne so it's a grand old time. So next up for September 3rd because we are still on September 3rd is Serpent and Dove by Shelby Marin and this one just has captured my interest from the first moment I heard of the summary. It is about Lou, who escaped from her coven to live in the city of Caesarine, where it is illegal to be a witch. And so she must kind of carve out a living for herself while hiding from her coven and hiding her powers. And we have Reed, who is trained his whole life to hunt witches. He believes that they are bad and evil and magic must be taken from the world. And somehow, Lou and Reed are forced into holy matrimony, and now these enemies are married, and I've heard it as the, oh no, we only have one bed trope, so, um, I'm here for it. And this book is, like, one of the most highly contested arcs at BookCon this year, and I think people are really excited for it, and it just sounds amazing. This next book is coming out on, you guessed it, September 3rd, and that is There Will Come a Darkness by Katie Rose Poole. I was so excited to get this arc at BookCon. Because, again, it was one I actually hadn't heard of before BookCon, but the Age of Darkness approaches. For generations, the Seven Prophets ruled the land. However, a hundred years ago, they just completely disappeared with one final prophecy. There will be an Age of Darkness with the birth of a new prophet, with the power to save the world or to doom it. As chaos takes hold, five individuals are set on a collision course for disaster. An exiled prince a ruthless killer, a once faithful leader, a reckless gambler, and a dying girl. And one of them or all of them could be the foretold prophet with the power to save the world or to doom it. I just like the whole prophecies 
and a like gang of people coming together that's that's what i like to see and i think it has a lot of point of views which i know some people aren't a fan of but I like a lot of point of view, so this is actually on my August TBR because I'm doing Arc August, so hopefully I get to it soon. Next is American Royals by Katherine McGee out September 3rd, and this is a book about what would happen if America had a royal family, which, and I always like to spice up all my fantasy reading with some contemporary here and there. So this book is if George Washington was made the king instead of the president and he started the House of Washington and now America has a royal family. We follow Princess Beatrice who is about to take up the mantle of leading and is pretty much stifled by all the responsibility. Then Princess Samantha who is the spare and doesn't care much about anything except for the one boy that is off limits to her. And finally we have Prince Jefferson who has the two very different girls vying to capture his heart. It just sounds like lighthearted and fun and kind of like this alternate reality coolness. And so we have one last book to talk about that is out September 3rd and that is The Girl the Sea Gave Back by Adrienne Young. So The Girl the Sea Gave Back is a companion slash sequel to Sky in the Deep and I say that it is like a... it takes place 10 years after the events of Sky in the Deep and has some of the same characters in it but it mostly focuses on new main characters. Tova has lived among the spell ever since she washed up on their shores as a child. Her own home and clan are long forgotten, except for the fact that she is a truth tongue with the power to cast stones and predict the future. The spell use her for this ability, but all Tova really longs for is a life of her own. And I read this one in July because I got my wish granted on NetGalley for an early copy, and I will have my thoughts on that in my July wrap up. And so finally, we can move on to another day in the month, and that is going to be September 5th. We have the Crooked Kingdom Collector's Edition. Oh my god, I'm so excited for this one. And this is going to be a UK-only purchase, but you can get it on Book Depository, which ships internationally. And this is the matching book to this Six of Crows Collector's Edition, and it's going to have, like, black sprayed edges. It's a door, the Six of Crows series, and so, of course, of course, I need to get my hands on the Crooked Kingdom Collector's Edition as soon as I physically can. And the last book I have to talk about for September is coming out on September 24th, and that is Wayward Son by Rainbow Rowell. This is another book that I accidentally now have, accidentally, three copies um, coming in the mail. So, so there's that. In Carry On. Oh my god, this book is just like the most heartwarming book ever. I freaking love it. It's so cute. It's kind of, I describe it as like a gay satirical Harry Potter, which I, I, I love it. So, and this is actually, I never read Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell, but this is like the fan fiction that the girl in Fangirl writes, I believe, but I just like Carry On on its own for what it is. Simon Snow is the worst chosen one that's ever been chosen. And his roommate, Baz, may perhaps be an evil vampire. Simon is awful at magic. His mentor is avoiding him. His girlfriend broke up with him. And there's a magic eating monster running around wearing his face. Baz would usually be having a field day with this, except he hasn't even bothered to show up for their senior year at the Waterford Academy. It's just so fun. I think I'm going to do a reread of this on audio before Wayward Sun because I love this story. Now moving on to October, which is also a month stacked full of new releases. First up on October 1st, we have The Memory Thief by Lauren Tansy. In the city of Cray Week, memory reigns as currency. The ruler of their city, Madame, makes sure that the gifted are able to steal memories with just a touch. When Madame threatens 17-year-old Etta Clark's mother by saying that she will sell off all of her memories, Etta joins up with the shadows to in an attempt to help rescue her mother. In order to do this, she must steal a memorized map of the maze, a bloodthirsty prison in the neighboring kingdom. Next up on October 1st is Shadowfrost by Coco Ma, and I actually met Coco Ma at Bacon, and she's just the sweetest little bean, and I'm excited for her book. Astern is the princess of Exara, a land where a demon has been terrorizing its people for centuries. When Astern discovers that she may have the power to rid the demon from their lands once and for all, she sets out on a mission with her friends to do just that. Along the way, she discovers a plot of her own assassination, and suddenly she begins to wonder how much of her life is a lie. Also on October 1st, we have Angel Mage by Garth Nix. Lilith is an ageless angel magic practitioner. On a single-minded quest to be reunited with her love, Palaniel, the archangel of Astara, she will put others at jeopardy and manipulate them to get her goal, which is to be reunited with her lover. This one just sounds really cool and different. Also on October 1st, we have Embers of Memory, which is a 
Throne of Glass inspired card game. I don't know the specifics of it, but I do know that it takes place during Kingdom of Ash and how that is going to be turned into a card game. I have no idea, but I do know that the art on the cards is going to be beautiful, which is my main motivation for buying it because I love everything Throne of Glass. On October 7th, we have The Play by L. Kennedy, which is the third book in the Briar U series. There is really no synopsis or no further information about this book, but I've Loved everything in the series so far. I'll be picking this one up when it comes out. An exciting release on October 8th is A Conjuring of Light Collector's Edition, which I love A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab, and I have been collecting all the collector's editions. So this is what the A Darker Shade of Magic one looks like, and this is what Gathering of Shadows looks like, and I'm so excited to have the completed collection come October 8th. And I don't know the exact release date in October, but we are getting the second bind up of the Steel Prince comics, which is a prequel comic for A Darker Shade of Magic. And it's just really cool that my favorite series now has like a comic and V.E. Schwab herself writes the comic. It's really awesome. Next on October 8th is the Goblet of Fire Illustrated Harry Potter Edition. This is to go along with the illustrated editions that have already been released. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, and Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. I love collecting these. Like, look at this art, look at Buckbeak. They're just so gorgeous and such a beautiful way to consume this story that I, you know, it's my whole life as a child, so. Next on October 8th, which is another big stacked day, we have The Beautiful by Renee Adier, which is the resurgence of Vampire YA, set in 1800s. New Orleans, which is just like the perfect setting for a vampire story. Celine Rousseau has fled her life as a dressmaker in Paris and finds herself in a convent in New Orleans, along with six other girls. She becomes embroidered in the city's glitzy underworld, Le Cour de Lyon, after catching the eye of the leader, Sebastian Saint Germain. However, when one of the bodies of the girls from the convent shows up in the lair of Le Cour de Lyon, I'm not French, Celine begins to suspect the man that has stolen her heart. More than that, she begins to uncover the dark secret of what really roams the streets of New Orleans at night. Ugh, I love New Orleans. I love vampires. Like, it's giving me such, like, Vampire Diaries, the original vibes. Also on October 8th is Reveal Me by Throttle Muffy, which is the Kenji novella that takes place in between Defy Me and Imagine Me. And I can't really say much more than that because it is, like, number 5.5 in the series. And last but not least, on October 8th, we have Ninth House by Lee Bardugo, which has been generating so much buzz. It is Lee's first adult book and it just sounds really cool but i know that it is very very dark so be warned before you head into it after living an impoverished life and witnessing a multiple homicide alex stern is giving the chance of a lifetime when a mysterious benefactor funds her education to join the freshman class of yale and really investigate what happens in the secret societies of this elite university but what she uncovers there just might be way more than anyone was expecting i mean lee bardugo does dark so well and it's probably one of the most talked about books of the year now some cool news on october 15th Barnes & Noble is releasing some reprints, which make me excited. So if you don't know and you are interested, definitely head on over there to pre-order. But we have The Cruel Prince and The Wicked King by Holly Black being reprinted in the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition. This is with the black covers and this is what The Wicked King looks like. Um, I only have this one. I don't have The Cruel Prince, but I've already pre-ordered The Cruel Prince because I was so sad that I never ended up getting the black edition. <laughs> but now I can have it in my grasp. Also on October 15th, we have the hardcover reprint of An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. This is like the old original hardcover. It's all like yellowed out and I love this series. I've read the first two books twice and the fourth book is probably coming out in some time in 2020, which is the conclusion. And for the third book, they got a cover redesign, but the first two only came out in paperback. And so now Martin and Noble is doing an exclusive edition of the new covers in hardback. So I will probably be investing in that because this book is old and beat up. And I love the series and I actually love the new covers. The Never Tilting World is a new book by Rin Chpeko, which is coming out on October 15th. It is about generations of twin goddesses have ruled Aranth. Until a fight long ago split the world into two and now half is in constant daylight and half in constant darkness. Odessa and Haiti, the twin goddesses, are called back to the point of the breaking and must set out on separate journeys to heal their broken world. And to round out the month of October, there are two October 29th releases, the first of which is A River of Royal Blood by Amanda Joy. 17-year-old Eva is a princess with the magic 
magic of blood and marrow, which is an ability that has not been seen for a long, long time. In her kingdom, Eva must face her sister Issa in battle for the throne where only the death of one sister will crown the other. And when there is an assassination attempt on Eva's life a week before the battle with her sister, she must turn to a fey instructor. Ooh, I heard the word fey and my ears perked up <laughs> to continue to hone her magic skills and keep herself safe. And unfortunately, she must choose between herself or her sister. And this is actually set in a lush North African inspired fantasy world. And finally, we have Grave Maidens by Kelly Kuhn. In the walled city state of Alu, Kamami wants nothing more than to be a healer. Her life is changed, however, when her sister is chosen as a grave maiden, one of three beautiful maidens that will follow the sick king into the afterlife. Nenea believes that this is an honor, but Kamami knows this for what it is, a death sentence. Determined to save her sister, Kamami infiltrates the palace with the intention of healing the king of his illness. However, she discovers a plot that is much more sinister. And this is the first in a duology. All right, so that is a stacked October and it just keeps on steamrolling through November. Like there is really a lot of delicious stories coming out in this fall and like, I'm so excited, but my wallet is crying a little bit. So on November 1st, we have the 10th anniversary edition of Clockwork Angel, which is similar in style to the City of Bones collector's edition, old gilded edges and stuff. You know, I'm full out Shadowhunters trash, so like, I need this immediately. I'm I'm overwhelmingly excited for it. There's gonna be character art by Cassandra Jean and just I love everything Shadowhunters as you can see by my Shadowhunter shelf, which it takes up more than one shelf now because this isn't all of it, like it doesn't all fit. Speaking of collector's editions, we also have a Court of Thorns and Roses collector's edition out on November 5th, and that is this wonderful book here. You also know that I'm Sarah J. Mass Trash. I love A Court of Thorns and Roses so much. A Court of Miss and Fury, one of the best books I've ever read. Once again, the first Tuesday of the month is stacked with new releases. So I'm about to go through everything coming out on November 5th. First of all, we have Girls of Storm and Shadow by Natasha Nagan, which is the sequel to Girls of Paper and Fire, which I loved this book when I read it in February and very excited for the sequel. Every year, eight beautiful paper girls are chosen to serve in the harem of the demon king. But one year, a ninth girl is chosen and she is made of fire. Lee is taken from her remote village to serve in the palace of the king, where the snatching of her mother to become a paper girl many years before still haunts her. At the palace, Lee does the unthinkable. She falls in love. And I mean, look at that sequel cover. I love it and I'm very excited to get my hands on this book. Okay, next is The Toll by Neil Shusterman, which is the conclusion to the Scythe trilogy, which so far consists of Scythe and Thunderhead. Scythe is set in a world where basically humans have conquered death and so the only way to control population is through these sanctioned killers that glean the population and decide who gets killed. Rowan and Citra are both thrown into the world of the Scythes when they are unwillingly chosen to be these Scythes apprentices. And this series is just really awesome because it makes you think a lot about population and death and just like the purpose of life. It's really deep and a really compelling YA read and I think it's an amazing series and I'm so excited to read the sequel because I think it's, there's a time jump in between Thunderhead and the Toll, so who knows what could happen. Also next on November 5th is Call Down the Hawk by Maggie Stiefvater, which is the next book, like the next series as part of the Raven Cycle world, which is the Raven Boys, the Dream Thieves, Blue Lily Lily Blue, and the Raven King. And to give you an idea of this series, I devoured four books in three days when I read this originally. So. You could say I like them. Maggie Stiefvater just has some really magical writing and I'm excited for this book but I'm not going to tell you any single thing about this plot because it will give away so much of the wonderfulness that you discover during this Raven cycle so please give these a read before you even read the synopsis of Call Down the Hawk. Next is The Guinevere Deception by Kirsten White. I have been listening to Kirsten White's And I Darken series on audio. Love it. I think she does historical fiction really well and this is The Legend of Arthur and Camelot retelling, which sounds awesome, and the cover is gorgeous. Princess 
Guinevere has come to Camelot to marry Prince Arthur at Merlin's behest. But what no one knows about her is that she is a changeling and her true name and identity remain unknown. She must protect her identity to help Arthur and the dream of Camelot. And it just sounds like magical and cool. Next up on November 5th is Supernova by Marissa Meyer, which is the conclusion to the Renegades trilogy. So we have Renegades and Arch Enemies. And this has been a series that I have been meaning to pick up for forever and I haven't. So I think that when this last book comes out, maybe I will just binge the whole trilogy because I like doing that. So it's kind of cool to have all the books out and then I can just read them straight away. Renegades is a set in a world where there are people with superpowers and are split into two factions, the anarchists and the renegade. Nova hates the renegades and will do anything to seek revenge on them, including infiltrating their ranks. However, she encounters Raven, a renegade who just might believe in her enough to change her mind. I love superhero everything. I love Marissa Meyer. I think she does like sci-fi fantasy really well. So, uh, this just sounds like it's perfect for me. I don't know why I haven't read it yet. I've had this book for a long time. The last November 5th release I'll be talking about today is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. She is the author of The Night Circus, which I haven't read, but I've heard a lot of people say that they loved. And this one just sounds right up my alley. It's like an adult magical realism type story, which I don't read a lot of, but this description really grabbed my attention. Zachary Ezra Rollins is a student in Vermont when he discovers a mysterious book, one that contains a story about his life. He uncovers some clues, a key, a bee, and a sword, and thus finds himself led to an ancient mysterious hidden library. So mysterious books and ancient hidden libraries, that's like pretty much a combination of something that I know that I love. So I'm really excited for this one. Um, I probably should read The Night Circus at some point too, but you know, it's fine. And on November 19th, we have The Queen of Nothing by Holly Black, which is the conclusion to the Cruel Prince trilogy. Cruel Prince, Wicked King, Queen of Nothing. Oh, it actually got moved up from a February publication date. And I, I just adore this series. Holly Black writes Faye so well. They're just like cruel and conniving and cunning and I'm here for it. Jude's parents were brutally murdered when she was seven and thus she was taken back to the lands of fairy with her mother's fairy, fairy general ex-husband. A mortal raised in the land of fairy, she, she will do whatever it takes to prove that she's worthy. To do so, she must defy the wicked Prince Cardin. And as Jude gets pulled further and further into the court maneuverings of Elfheim, she just may discover some cruelty of her own. Jude is just like the most badass main character who is power hungry and not apologetic for it and the ending of the wicked king really did something to my soul and last but not least for november we have star sight by brandon sanderson which is a sequel to skyward by brandon sanderson another book i've had for a while and like really been meaning to get to i've heard it fantastic things about this book i just there's just so many books and just not enough time and yet i'm probably I'm gonna be buying even more because as you can see this list is very long of all these books that I'm anticipating so you know <laughs> it's the life of a bookworm. Spence's world has been under attack for decades. Spence wants to become a space pilot however that is pretty much ruined because her father was a pilot and he was killed many years ago when he abandoned his command. Flight school however might not be that far off for Spence when she makes a hidden discovery in a cave. One that might allow her to reclaim the stars which is just the most awesome awesome tagline ever. As crazy, crazy, crazy as September, October, and November were, there's like absolutely almost no books being released in December. I just have one book to talk about. So um, you can catch up on all these new releases, I guess, asking for them for Christmas because that's what I'm gonna do. And of course, the book in December is Children of Virtue and Vengeance, which is the sequel to Children of Blood and Bone. This sequel has been highly anticipated for a while and the release date kept getting pushed back, but finally it is coming out in September. Children of Blood and Bone is like a West African inspired fantasy that is being compared to Avatar because of its elemental magic. And this is again, one that I've owned for a while, haven't read yet, I don't know why. Zelly lives in a land where magic wands ran rampant. However, the ruthless king zapped all the magic from the land. And now Zelly has a chance to strike out and bring magic back with the help of a rogue princess. I mean, this book is just so hyped and I can't believe I haven't read it yet. Like, this video is half me calling myself out on the books that I haven't read yet. So, you know, it's fine, it's fine. That is the end of this very long list. I'm gonna need another bookshelf. That's all I gotta say. I just love books. I love talking about the books that are coming out soon. Fall seems like it's such a popular time for book releases. Please let me know down below what is your most anticipated book for the rest of 2019? And please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And in the meantime, have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.